Hello everyone, this is Pastor Sean from Christians Unite, and this is a video series called Topics. On today's topic, we are going to be looking at anger. Now, many people have issues with anger, whether it be road rage, or maybe you get angry at your child, or um, you just get angry at someone in general that just gets under your skin. I personally deal with these issues as well. So I'm preaching to myself and to you that are listening. Um, sometimes I get road rage, unfortunately, and um, it's hard to control. Um, I get angry at my son sometimes when he doesn't listen to me, and I'm trying to learn patience with him. But just because you get angry doesn't mean that you necessarily sin. Now, it can lead to a sin if you act on the anger. But let's see what the Bible has to say about anger, and we'll kind of dive into it a little bit to figure out where God is coming from on this topic. First, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 through 31. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work do something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building up others according to their need, that it may, be, may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. So we need to be forgiving. We need to be slow to anger and learn to control ourselves when we feel angry. Now we're going to look at James 1, 19 through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is pre prevalent and humble, except the wor world planted in you, which can save you. So again, we need to be slow to anger. When someone's talking to us, we should listen before we speak. I struggle this in my own marriage. Sometimes I find a way to be defensive before I actually listen to what my wife is saying. And I know I'm guilty of that. And that's something I need to learn. So just as you struggle, I struggle as well. And so did the people in the Bible. So we're all in this together. So let's go ahead and look at more verses that describe anger. And now we're going to look at an Old Testament verse that talks about anger. Proverbs 29, 11. Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. So when we feel so angry that we're just rage, full of rage, we need to stop and let that out and not act on our anger so that we may be right and not sin. Again, we're going to be going to the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 9. Do not be quick, quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. So those that are quick to anger act like fools. Because as Christians, we should be slow to anger and be more understanding with others. Proverbs 15, verse 18. A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. So it's better to be calm than to be hot-tempered because we should be calming people instead of causing them to feel anger or rage against us. We should be like Christ in every situation. Proverbs 22, verse 24. Do not make friends with a hot-tempered person. Do not associate with 
one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. So if you typically are spending time with someone that's hot tempered, then that may happen to you. You may find yourself being very impatient and being angry. So these are people that you typically want to avoid if you can. It's very important to try to associate yourselves with people that you can learn from to be like Christ. Now, we should also, you know, still be witnessing to people that are not of Christ, but that shouldn't be someone that you're spending every single day with or someone that you are close with until they change their ways. Now, there is a different form of anger in the Bible, and this is the anger that we can show that is not sinful or what we like to call righteous anger. It's when anger is justified for a specific reason. So I have three verses that we're going to share that talk about righteous anger. Three situations in the Bible where anger was right. Exodus 32 verse 19. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf, and the dancing, his anger burned, and he threw the tables out of his hand, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned it in the fire. Then the ground, then ground it to powder, scattered it in the water, and made the Israelites drink it. Now this is kind of over the top with what he did, but it was still justified because the Israelites, if giving you a little context. The Israelites were worshiping idols even after seeing all the things that God had done through Moses. So Moses was angry that the Israelites did this. And he responded with righteous anger and got rid of that idol. And now I'm going to read a verse that shows when Jesus himself showed righteous anger. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. As he taught them, he said, It is not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. So Jesus showed righteous anger by flipping tables over and breaking things because they were using God's house, the temple, as a place to sell and trade to make profit. So Jesus responded with righteous anger. And the last verse is a repeat of one that we already read. However, I do want to read it again because it's important. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. In our anger, we can let the devil in. But we can also be angry and choose not to act on it and find a way to be calm. And know when the right time to be just in our anger and when anger is wrong. So I encourage everyone here to pray that God gives you patience and understanding so that you know how to use anger when it's needed and know when to turn it off when it is not. And be slow to anger but quick to understanding. Thank you for listening to this edition of Topics. Have a wonderful week.